Well, one of the most common video requests I get is saying, hey Tyler, can you make a video showing how you approach a machine and then how you set up your initial notes? Now, of course, if you watch one of my long live streams, you will see this in the beginning of my videos, but I wanted to make a short video to walk you through this process. Now, this is the process that I use when I'm pen testing or doing a CTF on a single IP, just to be clear. If you have a bunch of IPs in scope, this is gonna look a little bit different. So this is more helpful for a single host that is in scope or a CTF that you are doing. So what we're gonna do is I'll show you my initial scans that I do to see what ports are open and how we enumerate those ports. And then I'll also show you how I organize my notes based on that information. So here we have my terminal and the machine that we're gonna use for this lab is actually a machine that I created that will be released on the TriHackMe platform in the near future. I'm not gonna do any giveaways on here. I'm not gonna walk you through the machine because I don't wanna spoil it for you, but we will look at what is open on each one of the ports. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is you could do an in-map scan, but in my last stream, I got sold on Rust scan. I was not a believer and I know in-map can do some of the same stuff Rust scan can do as far as the speed, but Rust scan just made it super easy. I was working working on one machine and it was taking forever to show the ports. I did Rust scan and it was quick. So you can go ahead and Google how to install Rust scan. I'll drop a link in the description. It's super easy, but let's use Rust scan for our initial scan instead of InMap. And the way we can do that is we'll do Rust scan dash A, and then we wanna drop our host in there. And here is our IP and we will click enter. Now you'll notice I'm not enumerating any of the ports right off the bat. Right now, I just wanna see what ports are open on our target machine. The reason I'm not trying to see like, hey, what services are running on these ports, what versions are running right away, is it just slows it down a lot. Once I know what ports are open, then we will do a little bit of a longer scan with InMap and we'll enumerate everything running on each one of those ports. And that's what we're gonna pull into our notes. Now, Rust scan is quick. You can see it's just about done as it does this. The other thing I want you to make note of is if you do a typical in-map scan, so if we just hit in-map against this IP, like you can see it's already done. If we just hit in-map against this IP, it would only scan the top 1000 most common ports. Whereas the way we're doing it now is it's gonna scan all the ports that are open and you'll encounter both in the real world and on CTFs, something called security through obscurity or maybe a vulnerable version of a server or some web app is hiding on an uncommon port and you're not gonna discover it with your typical in-map scan. But with this information here, we can see we have a lot of ports that are open. Now, some of these ports are common Windows things and we can already tell this is probably going to be Windows based on what we see open such as RDP and SMB and things like that. But a lot of these, so if we look at all these 49,000s, even the 4,700, we can kind of ignore this. These are standard Windows protocols, not gonna be helpful for us, but the rest of these are things that we want to look at. So now that we know all the interesting ports that might be open, now we wanna do a targeted in-map scan where we actually spend time enumerating what is on every one of these ports. So the way we do that is we'll do in-map and then dash P that just says, hey, here are the ports I want you to scan and we'll do 80, 135, 139, 445, 3389, 5985. And then this one, this one looks interesting. It's not, it's not any of these. So it seems like it might be a service running here. So let's do 61777. And if you did your typical in-map scan, this would not have shown up on the in-map scan because this is an uncommon port. Then we'll do dash capital A. That means we want you to throw all the enumeration scripts at each one of these ports. So on the web server, enumerate what's on the web server. On SMB, try to enumerate what's on SMB. Try to get version information, all of that. So capital A. And then we will go ahead and drop in our host IP and dash V for verbose mode because I'm impatient and I want to make sure it's working. Now, this will take just a little bit of time, so I will fast forward the video and show you what the results look like and then how we organize our notes. Okay, our scan finish took less than a minute, really did not take too long. And you can see some of the results that we have back and some information about what is running. Before I even look at it, here is what I do. And here's where we're going to switch over to actually making our notes. I will copy the output of all of this and we'll just right click copy. And then what I use for note taking now is something called Cherry Tree. And now for each machine that I'm testing, I wanna make a new node for it. We can do that by clicking this button and we will go ahead and call this uh, YouTube for now. And here we go. And now if this would be like our machine, be calling YouTube. So whatever the name of the machine is, I like to put that there. And then in this first 
main node, we will go ahead and paste in our in-map scan. So we have all the information here. And then if we highlight all this again, at least in Cherry Tree, on your keyboard, if you hold Control, the Alt button, and then click C. So Control, Alt, C, you're able to add code highlighting. So we'll do this to make it look a little bit neater. And then I like to space some things out. So we have our web server there. Let's space it out from SMB. We know that all these are gonna be dealing with SMB. We have RDP right here. We'll space this out. And then just like I was telling you, sometimes on an uncommon port, you'll find a web server. And that's actually what we see going on here. And I'll go ahead and take our in-map results. I'll delete it from there. And we'll drop it underneath our in-map results. Whoops, did not mean to do that. There we go. And now for each service that is running, I like to make a sub node. And then all the enumeration I do, I limit it to that sub node. So let's go ahead and copy port 80. And then a hotkey in Cherry Tree is Control Shift N to make a new node. And we'll call it HTTP 80. I like to always put the port there, even though we all know what port HTTP is. And we'll go ahead and paste our information there. We'll do the same thing for each one of these. So let's do SMB. And we'll do the same thing, SMB. And we'll do 135, 139, and 445. And we will paste our information in there. Same right here with RDP. Copy it. Control Shift N. RD, whoops, RDP 3389, drop that information in there. And we are, we are just about done getting our notes set up. We have 5985, and I can already tell you that's gonna be a standard Windows thing. We can ignore that. We're not gonna find anything interesting, at least in our enumeration aspect of it. But here's the last thing I wanna drop in. And once again, you would not have uh, discovered this if you did your typical in-map scan, unless you did dash P dash, which is what I used to do on stream, but Rust scan does make it a lot faster. So we'll call this HTTP as well. And we'll do 61777 like that and drop our information in there. And now as I would begin enumerating this machine, I always make a to-do list for each one of the services that is running. Now a to-do list is important, especially for those of you who might be sitting for the OSCP, because it helps you stop being drawn into rabbit holes. So before I even look at the web server and get distracted by what's there, I make a standard to-do list. So I'll say, okay, what are some things I wanna check? Well, we'll do GoBuster on the directories. We'll use Fafuf for vhost. We'll use Nikto for a basic web scan. We'll check the source code on the page. We'll browse browse the website. Now this is helpful because if one thing doesn't work out and we get stuck in a rabbit hole, we can jump back to look at our to-do list when we're not so um, focused on one tunnel area. I don't know why this keeps popping up. Oh, just because I haven't saved this this uh, cherry tree file. Once you save it, it'll stop doing that. But then we can go back to our to-do list and see, hey, what are we missing? Same thing with like SMB. So with SMB, a big thing that you would check in our to-do list is check for anonymous access. If anonymous access is not allowed, then when we find credentials, we'll come back to that. But as I enumerate each service, so if I was enumerating the web server, when I find directories, when I find interesting exploits, I will drop it here because then very quickly, I can go back here, see all the ports that are open and, and think, okay, what was I doing on the web server again? I click that, I have all my notes on the web server. What was I doing on SMB? I have all my notes on SMB. RDP and this web server as well, keeping our notes nice and organized. So it's very easy to see what we have done up to this point. It stops us from checking the same thing over and over again because we failed at taking notes. And then we work through the machine methodically as we work on each one of those things. So I would encourage you, as you work on CTFs or an actual pen test, make sure you are taking good notes. It'll make your life a lot easier when you're trying to reproduce what you did. Or if you're sitting for an exam such as the OSCP or PMPT or CPTS, when you look back at your notes, you can easily control F and say, okay, the last time I saw this service running, last time I saw RDP running, I can look at my notes. What exploits did I find for RDP? What interesting things did I check? And then, hey, maybe I should check that on my exam. And that's exactly what I did when I sat for the OSCP. And that's how I passed the entire exam in about eight hours. So I hope you found this process helpful. Let me know in the comments your process of taking notes, your favorite note-taking tool. We'd love to hear from you. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.